I'm not in a sanctuary and neither are you, but together we are church. I'm the Reverend Dr. Sarah Halverson Cano, the pastor of this dually aligned the United Church of Christ and American Baptist congregation. We are proudly open, welcoming, and affirming, which means that we are intentional about our love of the LGBTQI community. This is our first solo streaming service, so there are bound to be kinks. Bear with us. The cameraman is my husband, and um, we may have some assistants named Molly and Micah who may periodically screech out for more grapes. So, bear with us, but I hope that what we'll find is that we actually do feel connected as we experience worship together. I want to encourage to share you with you this on your page, and so I'm gonna do the same thing. All you have to do is take a moment and get on your page, you're already on your page, right? And then just um, go to your Facebook, go where we are and push share. Now I'm hoping I can do that pretty easily so that then all of our contacts can see what we're doing here. I'm looking. I'm not seeing it though, but all you have to do is get on and share what you've got. I'm gonna send it to my husband so he can share for me. Hopefully he can figure it out, but unfortunately my tech man is a little less techy than I am. So here we go, cameraman, get on there, share this post so that other people can see it. And then feel free to make comments. We wanna be interactive here. I cannot interact during the service, but I'm gonna read through all those comments afterwards. But more importantly, I want you to be able to comment. We actually don't get to do this very often during the service where you can make comments on what the preacher's saying. So take advantage of it, it might be fun. The other thing that's new today besides the fact that we're doing this on Facebook Live is that we're doing something brand new called Dial a Sermon. We're working on this so that you can actually dial in 714 Six five six four one three zero, and you can listen to the sermon and hear two of our songs. So our, for our friends who are not online, this is perfect. If we know some folks that cannot do Facebook Live, that don't figure out how to get online, give them a call right now and tell them to call in this number, 714-656-4130, so that they can listen too. And then, of course, you can always just... Uh, send them that message or call them afterwards. And of course, you can always listen to our podcast online as well. So without any further ado, let our worship service begin. I hope you're all here. Um, you know, I want you to sing along, but I also want you to have your coffee. So join us as we begin singing our opening song, Gather Us In, a hymn by Marty Hagan.
not in the dark of buildings confining. You know, we actually picked that song four weeks ago, and it's perfect for today, isn't it? Because we are not in the dark of a building confining. Our music director, Michael Phillips, and I tried to figure out how we were going to do music, and he came up with this incredible idea of playing the song and then layering in voices, drums, and a guitar so that it had a fuller sound, but more importantly, it consists of several members of our music team. I hope you guys could hear that, because as you listen to this morning's music, you should know that it came from multiple homes. Mike is singing on the piano, Tracy is on the drums, Adam is playing bass, I believe, he and Sunda and Asunta are singing, Elena, that strong voice you hear in the back, and mine was the um, not so great one that sings off key. But isn't it amazing that we can literally be gathered together from our different places and our different spaces and join together in this one service? I am humbled and in awe and ever so grateful to be a part of this powerful ministry. So usually when we gather together, we have a time called Fairview Hellos, Fairview Family Hellos where we greet one another and we give hugs and high fives. We don't have this opportunity today exactly, but I'm gonna encourage you to do the same thing where you get to say hello to your friends or online. So I don't know who's there, I'm gonna check later, but um, hello everyone, do a little like message. Hi Mike, Karakis, I know you're there. Hey Cindy, who else is there? Say hello to each other. If there are names that you can see who are live with us, Give them a little hello. I think you could even like put a little handshake wave and wave to them. Welcome them to our service. We're so glad that you are here and we want to really foster community the best way that we can. So as you're all saying hello, hopefully that's working. Um, we can hear Micah saying hello too. So I hope you feel love from our children. Now, I often say that the most important thing that we do together is when we gather in prayer. So wherever you are, will you join me in this time for prayer? During the prayer, I encourage you to center yourself to breathe workers. And yet recognizing that ultimately each of us has a huge responsibility to the other. Our duty to love our neighbor means more now than ever. Jesus' mandate to care for the least of these never so apparent. And we take these days seriously, mindful of our responsibility, cognizant of our interconnection in ways we had never fully contemplated. We know now how true it is that what I do affects my sister and brother right here and even a world away. Help us to rise to this moment, to care for the least of these among us, and ensure that no one is left behind or forgotten as we see our own futures inextricably linked together. We are mindful of those who are hurting, oh God, we ourselves acknowledge all of our fears. We worry about our lives, and just as much, if not more so, we worry about the vulnerable among us. So I'm gonna pause and focus on breathing and spirit as you lift up your prayers or type them into the comments so we can join with you in connection, sharing our prayers together. I then will also share some prayers as well. Let us pray. I'm praying for our world. For my friend Sarah, who I believe is sick with the virus and spent hours at the ER yesterday thankfully released without pneumonia to continue to isolate at home. She's a mother of two young children in a small home. I'm praying for Fran, who is home awaiting test results. And for Laura, who had disc surgery on Tuesday. That part was successful, but there was an injury to her tongue during the anesthesia, and it is terribly painful. I'm praying for her and Joan. For all of our members who are older or immunocompromised. For the whole world, especially all those in Italy as the death toll continues to climb. Like many of you, I'm missing my parents 
but that's so grateful that we live in this incredible age of connection. It affords us so many ways to be together, even when we are not physically together. There's much to be grateful for. I join with you in all of your prayers. Holy One, we thank you for your presence among us, the strength that you give us to face these strange days. We ask for your healing upon our earth, the courage to walk into the unknown, and the love to lift us so that we might boldly follow the path of the healer, the teacher, the brother, and the Christ. Amen. Amen. I hope you're still with us. I know my husband had some problems there, so hope you've tuned back in. If we somehow tuned out, will you be praying with us, and um, we'll continue our service. So thank you again for being with us. We are so blessed to be able to gather in this way. I want to thank all of you for your support in the ministry of Fairview Community Church. Now is the time where we usually pass the plate, and um, we don't actually have a plate. The truth is that our board and I are some feeling some anxiety as we don't know what's going to happen during this time, fearful that we'll experience a drop in giving. So I want to encourage you to encourage our board by giving to ensure that we do not experience that expected drop. You can give in so many different ways. One easy way to give is simply by going to our website, which is ocfairviewchurch.org. You can give now that way. Another really easy way is to do our text to give. And all you have to do is type the word give, G-I-V-E, to 714-584-6990. And then, of course, you can always write a check if giving to give to 714-584-6990 didn't work. Maybe one of you guys could type that on there so it's easy for people to follow, Cindy or Mike. You can also write that check to Fairview Community Church, mail it to 2525 Fairview Road in Costa Mesa, California, 92626. And one of us is somehow going to get the mail. I don't know how, but um, we'll thank Leslie for that, that it'll get deposited. So thank you so much. Thank you all for supporting our ministry, for your patience and your kindness and your willingness to do church with us in this new way. It is important for us to continue to be this small church, the big voice, shining our light in Orange County as a proud, open, welcoming, and affirming congregation that seeks to follow Jesus out of the first century into the 21st century, living in that love, seeking that justice, and bearing that peace. So thank you so much. Only when we each respond to the call to do God's work will the kingdom of God manifest. Who will give of themselves? So I'm told we're back up, that they're going in and out, and I'm really sorry about that. My children can't seem to stay in their room. 
But um, we hope that you're somehow checking in and that even if it freezes up, it continues to pop back over to us. Just a reminder that you can dial in that number that I gave you earlier. Um, you can dial that gift number, but the number to dial to listen to the sermon is somewhere over here. It's a 714 number, 659 happen. Uh, we don't have a tech team. My husband and I are definitely not on the top of the list of technology. So um, I guess some of you are chiming in that yes, we are on. So we hope that we are. And we are going to continue our service with the reading of the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 19 and 22. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens, along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and the cornerstone in Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple of the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. So, we're in the middle of our Lenten series, The Journey to I Am, and what a journey. <laughs> Last week, we decided to hold service and stream for the first time in a long time. And meanwhile, I was on vacation with my family in Miami while Reverend Stephanie Toon took to the pulpit. Thank you, Steph. Hopefully you're out there watching us. You might be preaching at United Church of the Valley. I'm not sure. But I'm back, and I'm so glad that I am. Clearly, I am not very technically savvy, and I am not at the pulpit. But I am here, and I hope you are too. I was thinking, even though we aren't physically with each other, we could do a talk back like we used to after the service to process the sermon. And this setting might even be better for it. You can make comments here. You can send me an email or a text message or just call me. And as far as I know, Mike Carrick has started a Google Hangout group that he's probably put on there so that you can find out where to go after the service so that we can continue the conversation for our fellowship time. And I hope really have this sermon be a launch pad to a conversation. So I just want to remind you again that all of our sermons are available in audio podcasts throughout our website. If you go to OC Fairview, we're told that we must stay at home, that this virus is likely to infect 56% of us or more. The death rates for the elderly and immunocompromised are staggering. I think we're all a little bit in denial because to fully grapple with the reality of what is upon us will possibly destroy us or at least blow our minds. And some of us are already feeling that anxiety. Worldwide, there is grief and fear. We're told to prepare ourselves because every one of us will know someone who has the virus and every one of us will know someone affected by the death of a loved one from it. That is frightening. These are scary times. But it is in times like this, when we are forced to think about our own mortality, that we contemplate God, that we ask ourselves, where is God in our lives and in our world right now? Now there's one theological perspective that sees God as a super burning bush and a voice that declared, I am rather than giving a specific answer, a name which Moses was looking for, God simply stated, I am who I am. Tell them I am sent you. But human beings, being human beings, we're not comfortable with that kind of ambiguity. Instead of recognizing that God is the unnameable, the indescribable, the ineffable, the never fully knowable, we fail to understand the purpose of the tetragrammaton. The word that symbolized a name for God became like God to us. We thought we could capture this God, name it, own it, and domesticate it. And I guess we figured we could then make God do our bidding. And yet the very simple, yet oh so complex statement of I am implies simply that God is. And if God is, we can then add those two little but important words, God is 
with us, which is what we Christians celebrate on Christmas. Emmanuel, God is with us. So this week, we take it to the next level. From last week's you are I am, we have this week's we are I am. It's a very slight distinction, and yet I think it's an important one, because as individuals, we can reflect God's light, we can tap into the I am within us, and experience that in a deeply personal way. But this week, rather than focusing on God in us as individuals, I want to focus on how the I am is in us, plural, in community. That we are I am when we are we. Now, when I envisioned this series, I certainly thought I would be preaching this when we were all together in a room. And not just any room, but our sanctuary, God's house. So that I could myself, I could not preach my sermon in our sanctuary, in God's house. So my colleagues and I spent the last day and a half trying to figure out if there was any way around this, but we all came up with the same conclusion. We would be preaching at home. God's house is closed. So all of us are trying to figure out how to do church when we aren't actually at church. But the more I think about it, the more I realize that this morning's word could not have come at a better time. Because as our scripture declares, we are members of God's family. So, you know, we are related by God, in God, through God. We are of God, and together, we are God's house. For the last week or more, I have witnessed God in action. When we have embraced, I am in us. This is our time to shine. Sure, we aren't meeting on Sunday mornings, but the truth is, that was never what made us church. That was never what made us the body of Christ or members of God's family. The ritual is important. The songs move us and connect us. The sermon inspires us, challenges us, invites us to think about God in our lives, I hope. But it's not about the songs or the sermon. Sitting in that beloved building does not make church. If ever we thought that Fairview Community Church was the building that exists on the corner of Fair and Fairview, then the coronavirus has actually done us a favor. It's hard to believe I'm saying that. And as aware of it as I have been this week, God is at work. God's house isn't closed. Church has not been canceled or postponed. Church is happening. God's house is not a building. It is a body. And we are the body. We are the temple. A Sunday, Adam delivered groceries to Suzanne. My husband picked up her prescriptions and some food for her while I was at home working with the kids. Elena knew that my family didn't have any food in our house when we came home from Miami, so she picked up some groceries for us. Nora gave me some Ensure to deliver to Linda because she had some, and that's one of those hard-to-find items. We have a whole team of people who are willing to respond with love and groceries to any who need it. So if you are someone who needs it, please let us know. You can type it in here. You can call the office. In fact, the office number is working right now, 714-545-4610. Send us an email and a text or a message. Let us know how we can help because we want to help. The body of Christ is on the move. The house of God just bust open. Look, these are scary times. I'm not going to lie to you. But these are also beautiful times. These are God-filled moments where God reveals the Spirit among us and in us in powerful and profound ways. This is our time to shine, church. This is our time to shine. So wherever you are, I know we are together. Living in the shelter of love, the house of God, connected in this holy temple, shining the light, creating the peace, and living the love. I am in us. We are I am.
Amen. Our music director, Michael Phillips, and I wrote this closing song together for our Lenten series this year, The Journey to I Am. I hope you enjoy the song and join in with us as we sing it together, each of us joining together along the journey. Let's see if we can make this happen.